Good day, it's Tony Fortunato from the technology firm. Today I'm going to show you how to use two trace files and do a multi-trace analysis. That means we've got two trace files from two different parts of the network and we're going to try to figure out where the delay is. Along the way I'm going to give you some tips and tricks and see if that helps you out in life. So here we go. First trace, this is the client side on the left side, trace 13 client. On the right side we've got trace 13 server. So on the right side the server, left side the client. If you don't know how to figure out where the client and the server is, uh, the easiest way to do that is when you see something talking to a well-known port number such as this port 88 that is a directional thing so it's not greater than it's that port talking to that port so that is the server and that is the server because that's my destination so that's one quick way to figure that out obviously if you ask then then that would help as well so from the client side we set up uh, basically Wireshark capturing some packets we used a port mirror or span or monitor and on the Wireshark side of things we did an IP filter and that way that's all the stuff we get we don't get some extraneous broadcast multicast stuff flying around server side same thing we've actually set up an IP filter for the clients IP from the server so we don't get everybody connecting to the server and now the exercise is simply to go through the trace file and find delays and I've gone here to my time went view time display format and I changed my display to seconds since previous displayed packet displayed packet not captured displayed packet and then I also changed my granularity to milliseconds and by doing that when I have filters then the time will represent proper timings and you'll see what that means in just a few more seconds so when you go through the trace file we're looking for big times big time like seconds all right so if I just page down I can just eyeball this and say well I don't see anything slow so I'm gonna page down again and this is the exercise we go through. You can see packet 81, 15.9 seconds. And, and before you grab the cape and save the world, just take a look here. This is from the client. So the actual user, the carbon interface, had to actually click on something. So this is a false alarm. But that's what we're looking for. So again, I'll page down and just eyeball this again. 18 seconds. Again, that's the user. All right, that's fine. And you keep going down until you find another delay. And again, I could do a fancy filter, but I just want to manually do this just to kind of go through the exercise. You can see there's a DNS query again from the client. So this is again a human doing something. We'll look down here. There's another one, 29 seconds and 2 seconds. Again, from the client and the client and the client. Again, they're doing stuff. And as we go through this, you'll see um, there's one right there, 6 seconds. And this time it's from the server. So now that I've got that end of it, like any conversation, I probably want to filter this down between these two IPs and these two port numbers, just to be very specific. And the easiest way to do a conversation filter is you simply right click, you go to conversation filter, and you select TCP. When you do that, I get two IPs, and I get two port numbers in my filter. So I'm going to cheat. I'm just going to do a control all and copy. I'm going to come over here and do a paste, and press enter. And now I've got the same packets on both ends. So this is where you go through the exercise of some simple stuff. Did the packets change in size? Did the order change? Did the number of packets change? Uh, and all that interesting stuff. So basically you can see here 13 displayed, 13 displayed so I didn't drop any, that kind of stuff. And if you take a look here now that delta times huge, 101 seconds which is exactly, I'm going to say almost to the second what we saw at the client's end. And same thing here, 101 seconds. But let's go through this. You got a post command from the client saying I'm sending data to the web server and there's the post command going to the server and then I see an ack, ack that comes back from the server. So the server goes ack, I got your post, ack or your TCP packet, ack and when it gets to the other end it's 11 milliseconds. So now I can kind of gauge that it left the server at 0 and it got here at 11 therefore 11 milliseconds and you know it's not exact but it's a pretty good approximate number and then you can see right after that the application comes back and starts firing some data at 101.9 seconds and gets here at 101.9 seconds so right at the server we see whoops we see the delay at the server at 101 seconds so therefore the delay is at the server there you go hope that helps have a good day bye for now